Hello, my name is Jamie Moore, and I'm going to take you through the process of canning tomatoes, uh, starting first from the garden and then into the kitchen of the, how the processing actually happens, from sterilizing the jars to uh, the whole entire uh, process of, of processing tomatoes. I hope you enjoy the video. So we're in the garden, and I've got a variety of different uh, tomatoes that I'm growing, and we've got um, some plum tomatoes here as well as some plum tomatoes back there. Uh, these are old grandmas. Um, back over here we've got some yellow tomatoes. These are lower in acid. Uh, and today we're just going to concentrate on picking the Roma tomatoes. And the Roma tomatoes are going to be used in the recipe for canning whole tomatoes, or canned whole tomatoes. <coughs> I'm trying to find the ripest fruit. I don't want anything that's off color. Um, this will be uh, as red as I can find them. I, I picked some some earlier, but today I'm just going to pick the uh, ones that are uh, the ripest, and then those will be the ones I'll be canning with. So uh, the, the canning process from this point is utilizing uh, some equipment. Some of the equipment that you're going to need to have uh, is this gripper. This is a gripper to be able to pick up these glass bottles. Uh, I'm not sure the exact name, we'll call it a gripper. Uh, this is a basket that actually goes inside of a 12 inch diameter pot. But remember, the 12 inch diameter pot has to be deep enough to be able to submerge the, uh, the jars. So obviously this, this pot can't be, can't be shorter than uh, the jars. Uh, also, this is used for the a funnel to be able to put in the ingredients when you're putting them into the jar without dirtying the top of the sanitized uh, uh, jars. These are the lids that we're going to use. I got two different size lids. One is a larger diameter. I'm going to have one uh, jar that's a larger diameter. It looks like this. And then a smaller diameter, which is your traditional mason jar. Uh, to be able to take the core out of the tomato, I've got a shark. Uh, this is a tomato shark. Uh, very simply, it just works into the tomato like this, turn like this simply, and it pops out the core. Great tool to have, easy, uh, easy to use. Uh, so, we've got two different types of tomatoes. The Roma tomatoes uh, that I just picked from the garden, as well as uh, these are tomatoes that are from Brinkle's Farm and Greenhouse in uh, Butler, or Renfrew, Pennsylvania. Uh, and we're going to use those for a sauce. I'll make a sauce a little bit later. The first thing that we're going to do is can whole tomatoes. Alright, so now I'm getting the tomatoes prepped for... Uh, I'm going to blanch them in boiling water. And then I'm going to take the blanched tomatoes and put them into an ice bath. So I have ice over here. Fill my sink up with ice. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take the tomatoes directly from the boiling water. They're going to, they're going to blanch for about 60 seconds and then they'll make the skins a little easier to, to peel. So to be able to uh, prep the tomatoes, again, you take the tomato shark, you go into the tomato, and I like to just put an X on the bottom of my tomato. And uh, I, I, actually, this is for my compost. And I, I, it's easier just to take the tomato shark and go through all of them first, and then go back and put the X on each of them. So the X is just real simply, real simple. Just put your X on the bottom of them. Just like that. Okay, so now that I've got my tomatoes all uh, decored or destemmed and the X on the bottom of the tomato, uh, the reason I put the X on the bottom of the tomato is to make it easier to peel off. So after I blanch it, this, the, the, this peel will just easily come off. So we're going to get this into the boiling water, the tomatoes. And um, we're going to let them cook for about uh, 60 seconds. Okay, so uh, the tomatoes have cooked for uh, one minute. Now I'm going to take them out of the boiling water and transfer them into a bowl first and then into my ice bath. Okay. And so we're just going to transfer this directly into the ice bath. Like that. And, like I said, they'll just sit in here and chill out for a little while and make it a little bit easier to pull the skins off. Alright, so now that the tomatoes have had an opportunity to chill, 
I'm now taking them and pilling them. Uh, it's quite simple. That X really makes it quite simple. It's just a quick pill, and voila, done. The, okay. Uh, so the next step that we have to uh, we have to sanitize our bottles or our jars. Um, and the easiest way that I have found, some people will do this in the dishwasher. They can put the jars in the dishwasher, and run it through the dishwasher, and it will be sanitized. I found it's easier just to put it directly into the water bath that you're ultimately going to can in. So I do have a pot of boiling water, and I'm going to walk these jars or these uh, these these jars over to the boiling water. What I ended up doing is I filled up each of the jars with hot water, and I'm going to submerge these into the pot of boiling water for 20 minutes. The reason I put the water in the jar is so when I do put this directly into the hot water, they'll submerge to the bottom, or <laughs> submerge to the bottom of the a pot instead of floating up. So this is the way that they're done. Just walk it over to the pot here that I have boiling and submerge it directly into the water. Like that. These will, these will uh, stay for about 20 minutes to be processed, or can, not canned, but to be sterilized. I will also put the jars in here, or the lids in here. I, I will be putting the lids directly into the water as well. And these just have to be submerged for about uh, five to ten minutes, directly before you end up putting them into uh, or onto the pot. Okay, uh, so there's two different types of canning processes that you can do. You can do a cold pack or a hot pack. I'm doing a, a hot pack. In a hot pack, I'm going to actually uh, cut the tomatoes in half and put them into uh, a pot, fill it with hot water, and boil it for about five minutes. A cold pack is taking the tomatoes, cutting them or keeping them whole, putting them into the jar, and adding boiling water to the jars. I prefer to make and heat my process up or my tomatoes up and then do a hot pack. The canning process uh, happens not really a little bit uh, uh, quicker, it just, uh, the, the, the product is a little bit hotter or a little bit warmer because the tomatoes are getting heated as well. So, the way that I'm going to process these is just take these, cut the uh, plum tomatoes in half, put them into a, a, a bowl here, and then I'm going to add them to this pot, fill it with uh, hot water, and again boil it for five minutes. And that's the process of a hot pack. Okay, so now that we have the tomatoes cut in half, we're going to put them into this pot. Uh, there's a little bit of warm water in here. This is the same warm water that I use to blanch these tomatoes in. Some of it is... Uh, I, I took a lot of it out, there's just a little bit in there. So now I'm going to turn this up, uh, let this uh, boil for about five minutes, and then we're going to uh, take our jars out of the pot over here, and we're going to start our processing, or at least putting our jars, or filling our jars with our tomatoes. Okay, so I've got the tomatoes uh, halved and boiling on uh, the stove, and now what I'm doing is juicing uh, um, some lemons. And the lemons are used to increase the acidity of the, uh, of the tomatoes. And it's best for the canning process. Um, it helps to stop botulism in the, in, in the canning process. So I'm juicing um, three halves of a lemon. And I, it's about a teaspoon per quart that we're going to be doing. And after we uh, put a teaspoon in each of the jars, we also will put a teaspoon of salt in there as well. And that's just for added flavor. Um, a little bit of salt and then one teaspoon of lime. You don't really need a whole teaspoon. You probably get away with uh, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, depending on how salty you like. Okay, so uh, the tomatoes have uh, boiled for 10 minutes. Now we're taking, we're going, to, we're going to take the tomatoes and put them into the jars. Uh, a teaspoon of citric acid and a teaspoon of salt in each of the jars. I'll do that now to make it a little easier so we don't forget. Um, and so it's just a teaspoon in each of the jars. A, a teaspoon of salt. 
I'm going a little bit less than a teaspoon. Um, I don't need, it's about three quarters of a teaspoon is what I'm putting in there. Um, all right, so I'm going to shut the burner off and I'm going to uh, take the tomatoes with from the boiling water and put them into our jars. This is where this handy uh, funnel comes in to, to put the tomatoes directly into the jar without compromising the outer rim of the jar with sauce or contaminating it, I should say. So again, just pour them in here. Smash them if you need to. They'll go right in there. And what you're trying to do here is you want to make sure that you have enough liquid in here so the, the tomatoes are submerged. And not only are they submerged, there's a, a, about a half of an inch of head space left in each of the jars. Uh, and this is for the expansion during the cooking process. So, um, about right there. That's good. Next jar. Okay, so now we have our tomatoes that are into the jar, and we just want to make sure that the rim of the jars are completely clean. And the way to do that, the easiest way that I have found to do that is just dip a napkin or a napkin, a paper towel into boiling water, and just go around the outer end, outer uh, rim. It, it is hot, and it's it's quite easy. Just to you just want to just sort of go around the edge. Quite simply, with a hot. This is this is boiling. This is very hot. And what I'm going to take now is the lids, and I take my little magnet thing, slide this onto here, and put the lid directly on top of each of the jars. And then what I do is take my take my lids here and put lids on each of the uh, jars and just ever so slightly tighten it. You're going to tighten a little bit more right before it goes into the jar, into the canner, or into the boiling water. But you, you want to take it a little bit, just have a little snug on it. But the jars are hot because the, the liquid was hot. So just be careful doing this. Okay, so now that the, uh, the lids are on each of the cans, uh, the, it's tightened down. I just hand tightened it. A little bit. When they come out, I will tighten them again after the jars have cooled. Uh, a, a reminder: when you're using the, the the jars or the lids, always, always use new new lids. Don't reuse a lid that you that is from another can. So the other thing that I end up doing is I write on the top of the jar or on top of the lid the date of which it was canned and uh, just basically the date, so I know that it was from this year or last year. Uh, a jarred can product should last about one year. You could probably go a year and a half is probably sufficient. Um, that's it. So here they are. This is the way that you work. You put them onto the jar or into the canner. Uh, these, these little um, baskets really work well. And I, I, all you need to do is buy a 12-inch pot, like I said, and you can grab this at any uh, hardware store. Uh, there's a few different places uh, around the Pittsburgh area that I can pick them up. Rollers is where I picked this one up in uh, Mount Lebanon. So this goes in here like this, quite simply. There's little grooves inside of the, uh, the canner that allow them to sit perfectly in here. And again, this is going to be processed for 45 minutes. There is a reason why I'm using this, because the jar is hot. Again, this was hot uh, product going in. This is considered a hot bath. Okay, now that your canner basket's full, you're just going to slowly submerge this into the water, uh, being careful that the water doesn't go over, very close to being going over. Let's go to the bottom. Okay, as you can see, we've finished the canning process. These uh, jars have uh, can for 45 minutes in boiling water and have been processed. Uh, they will now, uh, I'll take a magic marker and I'll write on top of each of them the date of when they were canned and they will store in my basement for future use.